Ah. Hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome, one and all, uh, to Channel Other Dock, where today we are playing another game of Durance. Uh, Durance is a story game that deals with the balance of power in a penal colony. Um, the, uh, the usual setting is a prison planet in deep space, uh, but for today's session we're going to be using a fantasy setting called Perdition's Hold, a city established as a prison for magic users, because on this world almost all known magic involves making deals with demons. Uh, I'm Jim, I use he, him pronouns, and Durance doesn't have a GM, but I'll be acting as host for the game today. Uh, let us go around and introduce everyone. Uh, I'm going to go clockwise on uh, on the screen, so let us head over to Dragon. Hello, sir. Uh, well, hey. Uh, tell us, first of all, who you are and what is your favorite type of magic? I am a uh, son of a dragon, a uh, streamer. Uh, I usually play a lot of indie games, and I'm starting to dip my toes into speedrunning with Hyperlight Drifter. Um... It's a lot of fun. It's a hard game, but it's a beautiful one. And my favorite type of magic is shape-shifting. Excellent. Delightful. We, we likes it. And uh, moving around the clock to John. Hello, sir. Same questions. <laughs> um, I'm John. Uh, I am a sometimes podcaster, mostly just a, a gamer. Um, Favorite type of magic is sort of a. Um, uh, uh, that's a tough one. Um, I guess got to go back to your roots. Like the first uh, exposure to that kind of, of thing was Wizard of Earthsea. So I always liked uh, the naming aspect, being able to know a name of something, and that gives you power over something. Um, so that's. Uh, uh, true names, all that stuff. I, I, I sort of like that. I dig idea. it. Very cool. And continue around to Andante. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Andante. Uh, I'm an artist and a writer and a longtime gamer. Um, and my favorite kind of magic is uh, uh, psionics. My magic. Mm. Nice. Nice. I, I always feel that psionics uh, doesn't get quite uh, quite its time in the sun that it needs, um, so that's always good. Always good to, for it to have fans. Um, uh, incidentally, once again, as I am always uh, attempting to be a guardian of audio quality on this show, uh, uh, the uh, I, I have noted just for the audience that uh, the music seems a little louder to me today than it usually is, even though I have the settings set the same way. So. If you notice any irregularities like that, please let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat room, so uh, if, you know, just let me know if you hear any, if, if it's like we're getting drowned out or whatever, and I shall attempt to make adjustments. Um, I also figured out how to turn off the die rolling sound, so for the folks who hated that, you're welcome. <laughs> so, as we proceed uh, along here, uh, I should mention, this can be very much a game about terrible people doing terrible things. Uh, so just so you folks will know, we're going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. Uh, if we hit something that's crossing a line for you, and you know any of the players can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else, or make an X symbol, um, and uh, we'll ba back up and we'll do something else. Uh, if something happens that you're okay having in the game, uh, but you don't want a graphic description of it, type an N in the Zoom chat and we'll fade to black on it or put it behind a veil. So it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Uh, finally, if you're in the midst of intense role playing and you think you that we might be worried that you're really upset out of character, uh, you can put an O in the chat to let us know you're okay and that we're good to keep on piling, the, piling on the drama. Um, or something else we can do is uh, put an O with a question mark after it uh, when we say or do something and then think, okay, maybe that might have been a little too much. Uh, then everyone else can respond to that and let us know if we're still doing okay. Uh, while we're probably going to be tormenting our characters quite a bit, we just want to make sure we don't have that happening to the players uh, so we can all relax and have a good time. And all right. let's dive into the game here. Let's uh, get this thing going. Um, let's see, I had that set up, so I'll play that track. Sure, why not? As, uh, this is a fantasy setting, so I need something slightly, uh, slightly different for this. I am attempting to now use the structure of this game for something it, uh, 
uh, might not have been entirely designed for, but I think it'll work. So let's find <laughs> out. Um, Only one way to find out. That's right. Just full speed ahead. Perdition's Hold is a setting John and I, along with our friend Kent and another friend of mine, Clint Black of Pinnacle Entertainment Group, brainstormed together on an episode of a podcast of ours called Crucible of Realms. Uh, that was a show where every episode, John, Kent, and I, and usually a creative guest, would build a world. The, in the episode we had Clint on, we decided to create a medieval fantasy setting with a giant city where different nations would put their magic using criminals. Uh, for anyone who wants to hear it, that episode and all the others are still archived at crucibleofrealms.com. And I have actually a link that I have prepared. I don't have a bot yet. I need to get me a bot. Um, but uh, I'll periodically be tossing it in the chat like I have just done. Um, in any case, uh, in this setting, uh, about 500 years ago, the Church of the Promise sponsored the building of an international prison colony on a series of islands at the delta of the River Shield. Uh, magic cannot be cast across running water, for the most part, uh, so it was believed to be an ideal location. Uh, since then, it's grown to a population of over a million people. Uh, <coughs> rather a lot of people, over a million people. Uh, of course, what many folks don't know is that a few ancient demons infiltrated the church long ago and want to use Perdition's Hold as a means to weaken the barrier between this world and theirs. And it's been working. For about a century now, demons have been able to physically manifest in the world. Uh, they offer to enhance their summoner's natural abilities in exchange for part of their soul. <laughs> uh, or they offer to perform tasks directly, usually at a cheaper price, because in order to do things for their customers, they must be released from their summoning circles, at which point they have ample opportunity to escape and wreak havoc. Oddly enough, the more souls they take, the more human the demons appear, so it can be truly difficult sometimes to tell a demon from an ordinary human. Uh, many demons have also interbred with humanity. There are some humans with demon ancestors, the tainted ones they're often called, uh, sometimes they, too, are mistaken for demons, though the aberrations they might manifest in their appearance, like maybe scales or tails or small horns, are something they have no control over and are rarely, if ever, likely to be indicators of their true character. Uh, Perdition's Hold is ideally positioned as a magical incubator. Uh, the farmers of its northern district already make use, use of the demon services to be able to grow and harvest enough food for the prison city out of control for, for the prison city's out of control population. Uh, <laughs> there's too many people, but somehow they've uh, got enough food. They have become super farmers. Uh, a group known as the Cult of Alfero, controlled, some believe, by the notorious Unger crime family, seeks to gain power from the demons uh, on a regular basis. And it's said that in the Western District, one of the prisoners, the mad villain Hector Voss, has, been, uh, has even been to the world of the demons, the chaotic realm of Malefic, and returned. Uh, a demon who was even summoned to slay the previous Warden Mayor. Uh, and so that's what happened to them. Uh, soon, perhaps, the barrier between this world and theirs will be shattered, and they will all come through. Um, but uh, who knows? We'll have to see actually what happens uh, in this uh, in this uh, little episode here. So uh, let us get to Durance and the gameplay and sort of uh, see how this is going to apply to what we have going on here. Um, once again, I have the book in front of me because I remember nothing. Uh, <coughs> Uh, of too much significance. Um, as we look over this whole thing, um, let's see, we have the, uh, normally when you play Durance, Durance, you have a planetary survey and a colonial record. Now, you should be able to, uh, I've, I've displayed that on the screen, we do have that of, uh, of a sort, um, but uh, what I did was I went through and figured out what that would mean for a place like this. Um, what, the, what the letters would end up being. Um, it's actually quite convenient for that, uh, that uh, when Jason Morningstar wrote this, he put in the back of the book uh, how, to, uh, how to do Australia, if you want to do this or that, because that's what this is based on, um, <clears throat> ultimately. And so I saw, oh, okay, that's, that's Earth, Australia. I've got my trusty cards in front of me again, so I will read off kind of what we, uh, uh, th this, this is from Durant, so it's going to sound sci-fi-ish, but this is basically still going to hold for the most part. Um, for this colony, 
Um, the, uh, the atmosphere is excellent. Um, because it's an Earth-like atmosphere. Atmosphere is perfect. Sweet, breathable air and a human-rated mix of nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, just like home. Um, so on this world, that's, you know, they, they got air. Uh, the hydrology is excellent. Uh, surface water is abundant and drinkable. Um, so again, that is also, you know, same as Earth, basically. Uh, biology survey. The local biology is good. Native flora and fauna are abundant and generally benign across varied flourishing ecosystems. Again, just like Earth. Now, the things that perhaps they did not take as much into consideration uh, in this version of Perdition Sold, at least, because we're going to be probably making a few changes, tweaks to make it work best with better with Durance as we go. Um, but that's sort of as we're, we're dealing with this. Um, so first of all, uh, the climate. Uh, the climate is brutal. Uh, too hot or too cold or prone to savage storms, wildly unstable or otherwise murderously hostile to human habitation. Um, <laughs> this is uh, set on a series of islands on a river delta. So there uh, are likely to be certain issues. <laughs> uh, there are times, you know, flooding can be pretty bad. Uh, actually, some of their, uh, some of the houses are on, up on stilts. In the, as I recall, in the uh, farming district, in the northern district. Um, and uh, so that's, uh, that's a thing um, <laughs> that uh, kind of has to be dealt with from time to time. So the weather can be a bit annoying. Um, then uh, the geology. Uh, geology, it says, is a lethal combination of violent, unstable, difficult, and convoluted. Life here is dangerous where it is not right impossible. And... Uh, to my mind, that is representative more in this case, uh, just of the fact that this is a place packed with uh, uh, people, you know, packed with wizards, among other things. Um, so things are probably not quite as normal here as they, uh, uh, as it is in the rest of this planet. Um, I have a feeling the geology has changed somewhat as a result. Um, intelligent life which is, for Durance, it's you know, alien life. The natives are intelligent and primitive, but clearly uh, keen on catching up as fast as they can. They are strange and dangerous. They watch us and wait. That, in this, in this setting, is going to represent the demons getting ready to break through. Um, because uh, that's uh, what we have going on. Now, as for the colony itself, Perdition's Hold, um, what this came out to in terms of Durance... Uh, for the colonial record is that now, now Durance is uh, oh, Durance, um, Perdition's Hold is not a colony of any one belonging to any one um, uh, nation uh, the, the, an international church set it up um, but so the Church of the Promise is really uh, the, the sort of the one in charge of it um, but uh, again in Durance terms the colony is well planned and laid out, intelligently arranged according to both function and, in some measure, aesthetics. Uh, the the church the church of the promise um, is actually split up five ways. Um, it's got five divisions, and the city has five divisions as well. Um, basically, a north, south, east, and west districts, and a central district uh, where they all meet. And uh, each district kind of is dedicated to a different thing. Um, you have the uh, you have the northern district, which is where uh, more of the uh, you know the, the best land. They use the uh, they, they provide the food. They do a lot of fishing and farming on the river delta there, um, and uh, that again is where demons have made pact with some of the populace to turn them into super farmers. Uh, the southern district is the justice district. Uh, that is where the basilica, the church's main building, is. It's the highest point that's visible there. Um, it is the least likely to flood, um, but it also ha has a port uh, there. That's where you, they have port access. Um, most ships, uh, I think, probably land oceanside. And uh, they've got a lot of domed stone buildings there. Uh, Central District is the district more for temporal matters. That's where the market is. Uh, all the various practical city stuff is there. It's the intersection of the other districts, the axis of the wheel, if you will. Eastern District is, is uh, where they keep more uh, uh, things like the library, the arts district. Uh, that's also where the black market is, and uh, there's a, an information exchange. Uh, the Western District is 
where uh, a lot of the crime and punishment stuff happens. That's where there's an actual prison. There are prison cells. Uh, that, that is where executions take place. That's also where exorcisms take place. Um, and uh, so, you know, any necessary excruciation is also done there, if, uh, if uh, that is part of someone, uh, someone's sentence. Um, but that is uh, how that is set up. As for the, uh, for the workforce, again, according to the colonial record, the colony's workforce is effective. The workers are a mix of motivated, healthy, and skilled. The labor pool is deep and wide. Uh, that kind of, in this case, is more representative of the fact that pretty much they've done anything they need to to make this place work, up to and including working with the demons. There is uh, this sort of idea that, uh, it's sort of uh, perhaps irony, that uh, in order to make the thing that is supposed to keep everyone safe from the demons work, they have to call on the demon magic. Um, because that's the only way this thing is working. Um, as it was, it was founded like 500 years ago. It grew huge, and they were not expecting that. Uh, <laughs> justice. The rule of law is firmly in place, and the judge advocate presides over a functioning, if truncated, judicial system. Um, again, the church pretty much is in charge nominally of everything. They do have a warden mayor that they have uh, specifically in charge that they appoint that's an independent, supposed to be an independent. Um, the last one probably was in the, the church's pocket more. Um, and more specifically, the, uh, the, the demons secretly hiding in the church that are trying to get this thing to, you know, break through the wall, this place to break through the wall. Um, but uh, because the, of, of such an uproar, someone getting impatient, the last uh, warden mayor being slain by a demon, they had to appoint someone uh, who was uh, uh, somewhat less corruptible uh, and less in on their plan. And so that is the, uh, the current warden mayor, uh, uh, Constantine Vostok, we named him. Um, I mean, we named them. Um, now, as for the, uh, the downsides, uh, density. The colony is either cramped to the breaking point, inviting disease and discord, or it is spread across the land so thinly its services are, that services are restrained. Uh, I, I get a feeling this is pretty cramped now. Uh, just teeming with people, trying to get, hoping to get out. And actually, I mean, it's really just a question of they can't cast across the river. They're, they're in a remote place, so I don't know if there's much in the way of walls outside of the prison district itself. Um, and also, remember, there, uh, uh, free people live here as well. Uh, people supported by the church or descendants of prisoners, that sort of thing. Uh, they wanted it to work as a colony also. So, I mean, it's uh, its its own place. Um, prosperity. The colony is dying and there is only scarcity and want. Industrial and agricultural schemes have largely failed. Uh, or they would. Uh, essentially, if the demon magic support went out, uh, starvation would happen like that. Uh, so not a thing that, uh, you know, <laughs> this thing is not held up by anything but hubris, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Just the church sinking resources into it. Yeah, they, 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 they've, they've sunk a certain amount of resources into it as best they can to make it work. And yeah, they, they, they do what they can, but uh, it's still not going to be enough to actually make it work. They kind of have to turn to the dark side to make it work. Um, not knowingly, of course. Not the whole church is corrupted. Just, you know, two of the five main branches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, finally, order. The convicts may run the colony or be in semi-open rebellion or otherwise openly violent and prone to misbehavior. Well, we know what's happening here. Uh, there's a facade of order. Um, and again, the person actually in charge, uh, is trying to maintain order, but it's really a toss-up as to whether it's run by the demons or by the Unger family um, or uh, you know just the the that portion of the church the uh, the um, th this individual isn't necessarily there specifically but the uh, uh, the, the church is basically run by the the five fingers of the hand of the sentinel and two of those fingers are actually demons um, <laughs> so the the the, the scales of the sentinel um, who is in charge of uh, meeting out justice and whose idea this whole prison was to begin with and uh, then you have the, uh, the the cup of the sentinel which is you know handles temporal matters accounting 
uh, things of that nature. That's also a demon. <laughs> And uh, they're kind of playing a little shadow game with each other in the background with this prison, with uh, as far as, you know, on a managerial level. But uh, whether we get into that or not doesn't really matter so much. Um, the, uh, the, those, those individuals called proctors, basically the five proctors, heads of the, heads of the church, are, uh, you know, that's, that's on a big international level. They, don't, they wouldn't necessarily be here unless we want them here for some reason. Um, but that's kind of uh, just sort of... Uh, a look in on how that uh, on how that is all set up, uh, along with this world. Um, the next thing then that we need to look into are the drives. I'm going to just put those up here on the view. Hopefully, I can do this successfully. Um, there we go. Um, this. Uh, is uh, we need to we have two uh, two main drives servility and savagery those are going to hold but then there's a third drive that if you folks uh, if uh, you look in roll 20 you'll see that uh, we have the ability to cross out uh, there, there are six words under there what drives us and uh, we're each going to you know, be going around crossing them out until we're left only with one um, so let's see um, I think we will start. Who wants to start? Who wants to be first to cross one out? I want to cross one out. Okay, and uh, just go. You can go ahead up into the paintbrush. And All right. I'm use that to uh, to actually do it. All right. Let's draw a shape over honor. Okay. Wait a minute. There's not gonna be any honor. Honor's oh, not on this list. Oh, it's one of the. Um, dang it! It's one of the upper ones. Yeah, oh. sorry, upper left-hand corner in the. Uh, yeah, in the, uh, it's on me. Uh, all movies. right, uh, indulgence then. All right. Indulgence, indulgence. Okay, cool, interesting. So we know we know it's definitely gonna be a different one from last week. Uh, I'll keep going around clockwise. John, go ahead and cross one off. I will go status. Everybody is a. A convict of some sort, so. Yeah, for the most part, for the most part. Okay, and Andante, which one do you want to cross off? Alright, well, I figure this might start to seem like it's kind of a kind of a bad situation. Maybe there's something very wrong with this whole, you know, mass prison thing, so I'm going to cross out Harmony. Excellent. Excellent. Alright. And now uh, let's see. I am going to pick a, a color that's close to the shirt that I'm wearing. That's, there we go. Let's see, what drives us? Hmm. <laughs> All right. And this again is a narrative decision more than anything else as to what we want to have coming up potentially, dominating some of these scenes. Uh, I'm crossing out control. Because it's all a facade. There is no control. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Dragon, back around to you. I am... Oof. Okay. And you um, get to choose, basically. You pick one of those two uh, to cross out, and it's going to be the other one. Uh, I mean, I, I think that it's been pretty well established that the demons want to get out of here and wreak havoc. So Excellent. I'm going to cross out safety. Excellent. Nice. Nice. All right. So there we have it. Let me go ahead and uh, type that in down under our drives here. Freedom. Freed, not freed. Oh, there we go. You got to sound, make that sound like uh, Mel Gibson. Come on. Yeah. yeah. We got some William Wallace. Yeah. That, that That's scene will come later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Cool, cool. All right. So that is the uh, so so that'll there'll be the drive. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can uh, yeah. Like I said, those dice are rollable. Um, and so let me know uh, when uh, that that'll come down. If we ever uh, hit a point where we have uncertainty in the scene, we don't know exactly which way it's gonna go. Um, then then at that point, you you immediately go to the dice, and you roll two of them. The host. Or the host, the uh, the guide for that scene, um, gets to pick which two dice to roll, 
um, to try to make it interesting. And the way that that works is that um, any uh, so, so you see the arrows there. Um, any die that is larger than the die that uh, it is pointing toward has the potential to be uh, the resolution. So if you have more than one candidate like that, say right now, I mean, we've got one, two, and three um, set up there right now. Um, savagery could uh, could be dominating, but then freedom also could be uh, because uh, you know, two is larger than one, three is larger than two. So the, the guide for a scene there would uh, get to choose between savagery and freedom and just sort of decide which way it's going to go in the scene. Um... Uh, essentially, the way this whole game works, when it's when it's your turn, you are the guide, and uh, it's the, and the guide asks questions. We'll get to that actually, though, in a moment. Now we must pick our notables. Uh, we must create a cast of uh, these fo folks, uh, both the uh, both on the convict side and the authorities side. Um, so uh, there are a few uh, little odd things. Um, but uh, the way that it works, anyone who picks, uh, you, you get to, so, so we go around and you, we're, we're each going to get two characters. You pick a space on the ladder. Uh, if there's already a name in the space on the ladder, then you're going to get that character. But you can define whatever you want about that character. It was, it was very, we were, we, they were very loosely defined in the first place um, in, on the podcast. But then also you can make them into whatever you want. Um... So that's really only going to be the case with uh, if someone wants the warden mayor or if someone wants uh, the uh, one of the lags, basically, is Hector Voss, one of the base regular convicts, uh, since that one's uh, sort of a named character already. Um, and uh, if you want more more information about those uh, the, from from when we were talking from when we built it, we I can definitely we uh, either John or I can definitely talk about that, but it's really up to you. Um, all I'll say is the Warden Mayor we imagined as just a straight shooting person, uh, and, uh, who is actually not, not working for the demons. Hector Voss we imagined as kind of a Hannibal Lecter type, uh, who's, <laughs> who's been across and knows way too many things. Um, but, again, like I said, you can go in a completely different direction if you want. Um, the, uh, the Dimber Damber, who is the, uh, is... Uh, nominally in charge of the criminal side of things. Uh, yeah, the, the, the idea, of course, a lot of these colonies, uh, sorts of colonies, is that it's supposed to be, you know, you have the authority on top and the convicts below, but what we really have are two competing ladders. Um, so the, uh, the Dimber Damber is probably a, a member of or a manager for the Unger family, uh, the Unger crime family. Uh, they do have some opposition in in terms of there is another. It's not exactly a family per se, uh, but there are other criminal. There is another criminal organization that kind of tried to come up to kind of oppose them, and they interact sort of in the markets called the Free Merchants Consortium. Um, but uh, that's you know entirely its own thing. Um, also, the the cult of Alfaro, which I mentioned in the intro, is uh, also uh, working for the Unger family. There uh, uh, there are Ungers in that cult. Um, the, uh, also, you see, I've written the Dark Levy under Marines. Um, the, the church does have official guard-type folk there and official sort of Marines there, uh, but, um, there is a group of prisoners, in fact, who have, uh, banded together to do their own, um, keeping of, uh, keeping of order, and they're actually... They're actually trying to do good, and the warden mayor, the current warden mayor, has realized that and is attempting to make use of them, and that is the Dark Levy. A lot of them are uh, demon-blooded, um, and so it was a lot of sort of the downtrodden of the downtrodden that sort of came together to try to uh, do that. So those will be represented under on the authority side under the Marines area, so anyone you pick from there will probably do yeah. that. And that's everything that I wrote on top of the, there, but everything else is pretty much as you see. On the authority side, we have the governor, we have then a functionary, like a judge advocate or a marine captain who would be working for the church in this case. Um, free colonists, uh, uh, swells, planters, and spouses, basically anyone who's living there that is not a prisoner. Um, and they would probably live in the south district. 
um, and you know, people who help manage the prison, make it run, or you know, families of those. Um, and then, of course, you have the Marines, like I said, the Dark Levy, and then Emancipus, former convicts who have been released, uh, but are still living there. Um, because where else are they going to go? Um, they, they've done their time. Um, promised never to use magic again, <laughs> and there we are. Minor offenses, usually. Uh, of course, on the convict side, the Dimber Damber, the one in charge. Then under that, you have uh, their, their chief minions, the, the abbot, which is, again, this sort of a mockery. In this case, really a mockery of the church, um, who's a lord of vice. Um, and uh, Captain Sharp, the, uh, you know, a, a god of war, as it were. Uh, sort of a more, uh, uh, you know, in charge of uh, uh, the beat sticking. Um, bolters, uh, those are uh, escaped convicts, or ones that are hiding out nearby. Uh, they, end up, they haven't truly escaped, per se, but they have escaped justice somehow. And they're on the, uh, the convict side, they're like heroes. On the uh, authority side, they're the most wanted. Uh, again, convicts, uh, lags and sables, that's going to be Hector. Uh, initially, um, if we come to the point that we need more characters, they can be filled in there. Although, uh, an interesting variant we found last time uh, is that uh, we're just... It's probably going to be best to just let... Uh, as, as characters die off and uh, or their and their oaths are broken, just don't. Uh, it's probably best not to replace them, just for time purposes for this. Right. Um, and uh, then finally, of course, the outcasts, wreckers, and crawlers. Uh, basically, political prisoners or pe useless, ruined prisoners. Basically, those who are not going to be of any uh, uh, any use to anyone, either because their their refusal to. Or because they're just uh, too old or too injured to be able, or too sick to be able to do anything else. Um, and that is the entirety of the ladder. So, as we go around, uh, we get to, you, you pick a, a position on the ladder, we're going to go around twice, and you fill in a character, you fill in a character name. Um, you basically go in upper left on roll 20 again, where you got grab the paintbrushes, go down to text, and you can type in there. Uh, I recommend typing it at least like size 16, uh, depending on which font you use. I think we found the font we liked for that was, um, uh, I think it was Patrick Hand. I'm pretty sure that was the one. I will test out that theory in a moment to make sure. Uh, no, it was not, apparently. Um, let's find out what that was. Was it Contrail? Yes, it was Contrail. That was the one. Um, so that one seems to show up best. Um, so, let's see, we're gonna go around, I think I'm actually, for this one, uh, let's go ahead and go around, uh, counterclockwise this time. Uh, so Andante, uh, you get the first pick, who do you want? Alright, I'm going to choose Emancipus. I'm going to call him... Lucky Green. Sorry, I'm just gonna get this right. Okay. Yeah, there cool. we go. Awesome. And uh, going around, uh, so, th so that's a, uh, oh, so someone who's, what, what What do you think they were in for before? Do you know? Uh, they were a, uh, a long time uh, uh, magical card sharp. They uh, ended up owning a, a casino, uh, which uh, ended up falling on uh, really hard times. And then, uh, he uh, started turning it around by robbing uh, banks or something like that. You know, that kind of guy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, 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 do, what do they do now that, they're, uh, um, that, that they're, they've been emancipated? Uh, well, what they uh, spend their time doing now is uh, connecting people who haven't actually served their time in their entirety uh, with uh, sort of a shortening to their sentence. Oh, okay. uh, trying to get people out of the out of this uh, big mess of a prison that we've got going on. I like that. So that 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 actually it probably might uh, be someone who butts heads with the judge advocate. That's cool. All right, and go, continuing around uh, counterclockwise, John, you get the next pick. I think I'm going to go for Hector Voss. All right. Um, I think he'll. He's he's an interesting. Um, so I don't write anything in here. Yeah, I mean, I? if you want, you can put like a, you can put your name behind it, or uh, if you want to do that. But that's uh, 
so that we know it's you, or change the color of the text if you want. Oh. Uh, However you want to set it up. Um, uh, going around to uh, to Dragon, uh, who do you want? Uh, I think I'm going to go with a free colonist. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking like a third generation person that lives on this island. Hmm. Um, I'm assuming it's an island, right? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an island, a series of little connected islands in the mm, middle of a river right. delta. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, let me think of a name for them. Um. Sure. Oh, I didn't get my uh, name deck. I should have gotten my name deck. Oh well. Um. Her name is Ada Green Lace. Oh, I. Press. There you go. And uh, she is a she is the spouse of a merchant that um, that came uh, a, a while ago. She is, of course, of uh, of um, she has demon blood. Of course, uh -huh. why not? Um, and. Uh, she has been a little bit uh, unhappy with the situation on the colony recently. I'll bet. Um, she she has been starting to notice that there's a lot she could do to help out people that have been convicted. Um, uh, uh, I forgot the word. Uh, unjustly. Mm. So she's been trying to set up a smuggling ring to get things both in and out of the colony. I like it. Excellent. Nice. Very good. Um, so it's to me, and I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to grab Captain Sharp, I think. That's, uh, that's where I shall go with this. Um, let me change the text color here there we go all right um let's see fantasy name generator don't fail me uh let's see sure let me just open the let me open the edwardian name see if anything weird comes out so while you're doing that can i say i i see hector voss as we we talked of as a as a Hannibal Lecter yeah. sort of character, um, so much so that the leaders of the church considered killing him, but don't know whether that would actually make him more dangerous if if they were to actually do away with him, mm. um, because that might allow him to come back as something much more dangerous. Mm. I yeah. And, and and so he's in that in that role of he knows he knows a lot. He knows more than most people and other convicts come to him because he he might be mad, but he actually does know he knows names, he knows people on the other, things on the other side and and techniques that that have been lost the most Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Um, uh, Captain Sharp, in this case, is going to be Evan Unger, um, which is one of one of the Ungers, um, who is basically the uh, you know, just in charge of the uh, the the uh, protection rackets a little bit, somewhat, but mostly uh, uh, does the you know anytime you know we we need someone killed, he's the one you send. Um, <laughs> So we're going to go around uh, again, uh, but uh, just as, as a caveat, um, you need to pick, uh, if you picked a, uh, uh, you picked from the opposite side this time, so if you picked uh, from the authority side, you need to pick from the convict side uh, for this pick, and also it needs to be a different rung on the ladder, so it can't be the one immediately adjacent to the right or left of the one that you just picked. Um, so it needs to be a different position. So different side, different position. And once again, we're back to Andante. All right, I'm going to choose a bolter. He's a um, wait here. Uh, he's 
He's going to be convict royalty. We're going to call him uh, uh, Jesse Waters. Uh, Jesse Lobwaters is uh, convict royalty. He's uh, actually the son of the son of some huge gangster uh, 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 he uh, was a, a necromancer almost conquered the world at one point in time Ooh, nice been there since the beginning so he's the great 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 grandson of some big big guy excellent but he's also kind of a nobody I mean, <laughs> this has a great name to live up to <laughs> awesome awesome I love that uh, and then it's to John. Um, okay, so I will go with the functioning functionaries, okay. the judge, judge advocate, and captain of the Marines. So I do I name them both. Well, no, you take one of one of them. Okay. Um, I will go with. Um, I think the captain of the Marines, and let's see. Um, so I see him um, as he he's he's the captain of the Marines. He's very black and white, strong. Uh, yeah, we're the criminals. We're the we're the we're the we're the guards. You know, um, if he has to put down a riot. You know, he does it with 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 force, with overwhelming force, trying to uh, minimize casualties where he can. He's not he's not a cruel person, um, but he believes in 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 you know hard authority. <laughs> sort of d- Judge Dreddish. Yeah, ah. yeah. I, I, I could, that, that's that's a good yeah. Um, so let's see, and I'm doing I'm doing a name too. Name, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go Dorvim Dust. Um, he probably yeah, and and so let's see how to do this. Um, yeah, he probably does not. Um, he doesn't deal in magic. Um, his people don't deal in magic that he knows of. That he, um, knows, of. <laughs> that he knows of. That's what it comes down to. Um, realistically, um, they do. That you know, the, his his soldiers, his you know, his troops probably have to deal deal in magic, and you know, just to get the job done in some circumstances. Mm, um, but. He he, either turns an he, he turns an eye to it or um, actively just doesn't want to know, so he doesn't know. Um, so, excellent. Nice. Uh, then back around to Dragon. Uh, do you- uh, I I think I'm going to choose a crawler. Oh. Um. Uh, his name's going to be. Sander um. Sander um. Uh, he was he was a guy that, um, back in the day, um, achieved kind of like a level of uh, notoriety for being a very powerful spellcaster, but uh, he paid for the for for such power very dearly. So now at his old age, he's got like a sliver of his soul. And he's just a shell. Mm. Um, he barely functions. He barely walks. He barely talks. Um, but a lot of people are still kind of afraid of him. Nice. Nice. I like that. Very cool. All right. And it's back to me. You know, this is interesting. Um, see, I... On the one hand, I could take the Warden Mayor, but um, at the same time, I played uh, I played the Governor last time, 
uh, last week, and also I think it might be interesting if we have a story that does not actually involve uh, as 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 much the absolute top of the letter. So these are people that are there, um, but they're not necessarily going to be um, a, a notable uh, in this scenario. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to actually take, and I think there's more. Uh, uh, we're primed more for conflict if I take uh, someone who's like the... I want to take, like, the Captain of the Dark Levy. I think that'll be interesting. Because um, then we get to play with that competing system of, uh, you know, two different kinds of Marines, basically. <laughs> well, you have the Marines and then the private security force. I like it. Um, that does... Pro and so the Warden Mayor might come into it as an NPC, possibly. Just like the Dimber Damber might. We haven't decided who that is, but their last name's probably Unger. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, li I like that. I like that. So let me go ahead and come up with the name of... This is probably someone who is demon-blooded. Um, let's see. Let's go... I'm gonna go... And there are several different... Uh, Several different ways I could go with this, but I'm gonna. Let's see. Yeah. I think. So I've got a first name. And. And I shall briefly dip into. Hey, come on, where are you? Where are you? There you are. As I'm uh, sort of looking this up and down from the various uh, fantasynamegenerator.com, folks, go check it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with Montano Eid. Um, nice. That's a good name. Let me uh, oh, let me pull up the correct thing here. There we go. Uh, I'm trying to make sure it's the right. There we go. So there we go. And that is the uh, the. The captain of the Dark Levy. Excellent. So we have all of our notables. And, uh... Generally speaking, the, the player of the, uh... We didn't even do this last week, but the player of the highest-ranking noble on the authority side should announce how convicts are identified, processed, and tracked. Um... Do they wear uniforms? Um, do they have barcodes or whatever? Probably not in this setting. Um, and uh, the thing being, though, I don't think they really bother with that for this island because it's uh, it's a demon cover, so I don't think there's anything like that in place. Probably. What do you What do you folks think? Uh, just speaking from my own personal doings in in rifts, if if I were to have a, a penal colony, I'd probably mark people's auras so that you could use, you know, magical sight just to do a real quick identify on whether or not they're a prisoner or not. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's like a magical marking. Cool, I like that. I have Yeah, let me uh let me quick quickly get a fix on something. Ah, I moved the uh I, I moved roll twenty a bit. Let me see if Oh, it's latched onto the wrong one. Oh dear. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me fix that real quick. And uh, let me go ahead and go here for a second, and then I will go back. Uh, actually, yeah, let me move that out of the way. There we go. See where it, where that is. Hmm. Nope, that's still having a problem. Okay, one more time. Yeah. 
hang on a second. I'm going to show everyone the, the Shakespearean name generator for a second, and then I'm going to come back to uh, the right one. Um, <laughs> as, uh, yay, technical difficulties. We love them. We love them so much. Um, okay. It's definitely latching onto that one. Okay. So let me then go back to that one. Ah, there we are. Okay, I see what the problem is. All right. Let's see. Let me move it down just a wee bit more. And that's almost fixed. Okay. There we go. Excellent. It's fixed. Okay. <laughs> Yay! All right. Now let us uh, let, let us proceed. Um, now we moved on to oaths. Now in the in the game as it's written, um, you go around again picking oaths um, for anyone. It, it doesn't have to be your character typically. However, in this case, just for time purposes uh, and such, uh, I'm just going to let you pick your own oaths for your characters so that everyone can be doing working on that at once. Um, so if you if you look down. On roll twenty, I've written all of the oaths out. Uh, you don't know. You, you could also make uh, make your own if you want to, um, as long as they're sort of in that vein. Um, it's it's an oath that's uh, the ideally you want an oath that kind of pits you against the drive uh, of freedom. Um, so uh, it's like everyone wants freedom, but I will never do this thing to get it. Um, and the oaths represent that thing. Um, and we have a bunch of them, and also, it's if, if, if need be, you can always roll d6s if you want to figure out uh, what oath to take randomly. Um, but, uh, yeah, you want to go down that list and just uh, figure out what oath you want for each of your two characters. We can use them even though they've been crossed out, right? Uh, there oh. should not be any oaths crossed out. Uh, oh, that, oh but... I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, if someone else takes an oath, I'm not going to be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I, it would be nice if we all had unique oaths, but we don't necessarily have to. Last week, I ended up accidentally taking the same oath as the. Uh, I was playing the governor. I took the same oath as the Dimber Damber, as it turned out, and I didn't realize it until we were going around and saying what all our oaths were. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fault you. Fault anyone for doing that. Um. But yeah, feel free to like mark ones that you're using just so that we'll see that it's being taken just for that purpose. Um, let me see here. I have, I have, uh, I have a couple of captains. Okay, a couple of pain givers here. So let's see. Oh, I love this one. Well, I like. That. Do I need to? Do we need to put it by the who it goes to? Yeah, uh, if you would, um, you can uh, you can type the oath or copy and paste if you want. Uh, although actually that's going to be no, I put that in the background. Yeah, you can type it up in the on the top in in there if you want. That that way it'll kind of we'll be able to see better. Um, and that one. You know, it's, uh, yeah, let me move this up here. Little one. Uh, forgive me, I need to be excused for this moment. Oh, sure. All right. So whilst we're looking this over, let's see. Ooh. Dark Levy. Just so I kind of understand the, the, mm -hmm. the scale of the church, this is like a Vatican kind of thing, right? That it isn't really um like it isn't really a nation but it has right. political le levy over everyone yes that's right okay okay 
And it has real power. There are... Hmm. They have their own armies. Right. And their own sort of... We didn't go we didn't go into it, but they had their own magics, if you wanted to call it that too. So Oh, okay. You know, I kind of I I know it's really ridiculously simplistic in some ways, but I'm I think I'm gonna have to take uh, one of the oaths that I took last time. Um, because I think it just fits for too many things. Um, so let me go ahead and mark that one. All right, let's go over here. And you can modify the oaths if, it, if you need to. Hmm. There you go. Eight of green lace. And over here, cinder um. I will never kill a human being. Hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tragedy, tragedy. <laughs> just cut to a pile of bodies. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I just realized what you were doing. Dang it. Okay. You were putting them down there. I dragged mine up to the top. I see what you've done there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? <laughs> oh yeah, I I did both just to be sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's that's gonna be hard to uphold, being an enforcer. Yes. That's not gonna kill. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I expect. <laughs> oh, I expect. To, I expect these oaths to get broken if we can. <laughs> that's that's our aim here. This game makes lovely downward spirals. <laughs> yep. Seems about right. Okay. Do we have uh, Do we have our oaths? Um, I'm still yep. working on on Hector Voss. Oh yeah, that's gonna be. Oh yeah, that, you you went and picked the most complex character, John. What are you <laughs> doing? I know. I know. That's that. That was that was the mistake. I I, I was overthinking it. <laughs> That can uh, happen. I see one that might work for him. What do you think? Go I ahead. will never go back there again. That's, a, that's <laughs> not bad. Where, where's that? That's under uh, honor. Mm. The number that's, four. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that works. We know where he doesn't want to go. Um <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, right. He knows he's been there, and he knows what's awaiting him when he goes back. Exactly. So he's um, it's a V A S. It's a V O S S. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, why won't it let me go back and edit? That's annoying. Um, you can uh, if you type something, you can go back and edit, but you have to use the uh, the select the the arrow to to do it. Uh, to uh, and double click on it to make that work. Yeah, for okay. some reason, it doesn't let you. If yeah, if you go off of it and you you're using the I beam, and it's not going to help. You're not, it's not going to let you in. Okay. It just assumes you want to type something else. Yeah, that's that's weird. Versus. <laughs> um, what was I gonna? There was something I was going to look at right right quick, but it's gone from my mind. <laughs> oh well, these things happen. Okay. Yeah, that's about. Yeah, we're about ready to get this show on the road. Do we name the Dimber Damber now, or we, we can... cross that bridge when we get to it? Last time we didn't really worry about it, but I think because it's the Dimber Damber, it might be helpful. Um, I mean, you, we could just say randomly it's the Ungers, um, hmm. but uh, or it could or it could just be a collective. In this case, there might not be an official Dimber Damber. It might just be the family. Hmm. There probably is a family head. Now that yeah. I'm thinking of it, there's probably like a, a, a godfather type. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, probably slightly more Germanic, given that it's un Unger, but anyway. Um, well, who cares? Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, we can. Um, it could be, a, could be a shadow puppet, somebody who doesn't actually exist, but everybody knows about and is, you know, mm -hmm. still somehow operating within the within the system somehow. Well, like, they've got somebody occasionally who shows up to play the Dimber Damber. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really just the family collectively is just doing it. They don't have a... Uh, because they don't want to target on someone's back in particular. Oh, I love that. <laughs> they, they've got the cousin that, that, you know, that they... is Yeah, is the tar he's the stupid one, but they... Oh, have, man. Uh, authority, so that... <laughs> The inbred son with the blue blood. Oh, good right. lord! So it's yeah. So it actually is a particular person. It's just that uh, he's uh, a complete idiot. He's oh, completely controllable. That poor fella. Uh, Someone totally expendable. That, that poor person. Let's see. There could always be that, and and suddenly a demon gets hold of him. Oh, that would not be good. And and, fl and does the flip on them? I don't know. That's a. Well, that's we yeah, might happen. We'll have to see. They're not a notable per se, but let me uh, let me take a look here. Oh, that's for season two. Yeah, that's that's, that's season, season two. Season. Yeah, we don't we don't want to we don't want to use all of our uh, <laughs> don't want to use up all of our writing this season, John. We need to just make sure that we have. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to run out of words. Don't want to run out of words. <laughs> that's dangerous because you know you can. For, you know, not have anything left to say when you get to the end of your, um... So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see... Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna. I, I think I've just come across a name. I'll go ahead and put it in. Um, how do we feel about uh, Alaric Unger? I like it. Works good. There. You can call me Al. Yes, we can if we wish. Um, but it's a figurehead. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go around uh, just so that we, uh, you know, read out what our oaths are for our characters, just so that, uh, uh, because I understand that it's probably not uh, not easy to read on the screen for everybody um, who, who might be watching this right now. Um, I'll go ahead. I'll start again. We'll go clockwise again, and uh, I'll start with uh, with Dragon. Uh, go ahead and for your characters. Um, Again, who your characters are and what their oaths are. Uh, my characters are the spouse, Ada Greenlace. Um, she is... Do I go through the whole character thing or just her oath? Just the oath. I'll be fine. Okay. Uh, she will never place her own safety over the people's freedom. Awesome. And uh, the crawler, Sander Um, that will never beg for mercy. Excellent. Like that. So these are the things we're going to be trying to challenge. This yeah. thing. And around to John. Um, so the Supreme Justiciar Dorvan Dust, I will never moderate my power. Uh. And uh, Hector Voss, the Soulless, I will never go back there again. Mm. And Dante? All right. Uh, Lucky Green has taken an oath to never rat out any of his mates, to any of the people that he works with, or any of the people that he serves. He will never give information about them. Complete discretion. Excellent. And, uh, yeah. Jesse and Longwaters, uh, has sort of a, sort of a, a family, a family thing going where he will never allow a, a person or a group to best him. Ah, uh, nice. Gotta, He's got a, a long heritage to uphold. Um, I never allow a person or a group to be, uh, is so. Yeah, there you can actually fill somebody in, um, either a person or a group of people. Oh, I see. No, it's just a general. Oh, anybody. No one yeah. will ever bet. Okay. <laughs> no one is better than him. Awesome. I'll take it. Um, I am uh, playing on the authority side. 
um, the uh, the captain of the Dark Levy, Montano Eid, uh, who has vowed never to kill a human being. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then on the other side, another militant, uh, Captain Sharp, Evan Unger. Uh, I will never let honor interfere with personal gain. <laughs> oh, nice. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> Has Montano killed before, or is it just a thing that he lives by? Was oh. he traumatized by killing someone, or...? I, I think maybe, yeah, I, I think maybe it's possible that, uh, that uh, he was someone who... Yeah, he was in the... I mean, in, yeah, that's the... I think he got accused of murder, and that's why he's there. Mm. He's uh, was accused of murdering someone magically, um, and then they sentenced him because he's got horns, um, and uh, but he 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 has always maintained that he is innocent, but still kind of has that sense of guilt just for being uh, who he is. A little bit, unfortunately, um, that uh, he unfortunately listened too much to uh, to, to the others, uh, uh, to to society, t trying to tell him who he was. Right. He's um, like, do not prove them right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so it's like, no, I'm uh, and I had never killed. I'm never going to kill. But nice. Um, probably someone who still has somewhat of a martial background a bit um, might be, might have been, you know, worked as security guards, bouncer, that kind of thing before. Um, and, uh, you know, is good at organizing people, but uh, do, does not actually, uh, does not actually want to kill anybody. Incapacitate, sure. Uh, hurt a lot, sure, if need be. But uh, never kill. <laughs> would, he, would he kill a demon, though? Ah, I did specify human being. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's it. That's where I thought you were going, but I just yeah. wanted to, to swing at that. He's true. He's very true. Okay. A uh, way to avoid the uh, the cliches there, Jim. Yeah, exactly. I know, right? <laughs> Sadness. Uh, one try. Well, captain of the guard and my, my troop killed my wife and children. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Never kill again. I hate when that happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, this is true. This is true. Um, so I think we're about. <laughs> oh, so I think we're about there. Um, now, uh, since we're in, we're we're approaching the halfway mark, so what I'm going to ask is, um, do you want to go ahead and start doing like a couple of scenes? And then break, or do you want to take a break now? Uh, I've got seven minutes. I'm fine with making uh, a couple of scenes. Yeah, let's let's each take a turn, and then we'll go to break. All right, that let's works. do this thing. Um, so let me uh, switch down to something else that might be a form of ambience. I tried to pull up uh, earlier. Let's see how that sounds. Um, there's a pretty good expectations with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. So I am supposed to start as the host, just in again to sort of demonstrate, sort of as these things go. Um, uh, so I'm going to be the first guide. And what I do as the host is I just ask a question, and uh, then it is the job of the players to the other players to answer it. Um, I'm like I'm. I have to. I need to aim the question against uh, these oaths, um, and not invoke my own character if possible. If possible, I should not play a character during this scene. Um, I can if we absolutely need it. Um, like if you know if, if my notable needs to get pulled in for whatever reason, or you know we just need a bunch of NPCs that are very differing. Um, but by and large, um, it's going to be. Uh, just mostly uh, uh, you folks uh, work, you know, working this out. Um, and by and large, uh, well, let me, okay. Stop saying by and large, Jim. Just pick some people and do it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So, we've got a couple of things here. Um, don't want to challenge Hector's oath immediately. Uh, let's see. Crawler, I will never beg for mercy. I'm going to place my own safety over the people's freedom. Hmm. Never 
or moderate my power. Actually, uh, we could play with that. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I kind of want to put, uh, I want to start out by uh, trying to get a situation for, uh, yeah. So, in my effort to, once again, to try to challenge two oaths at once, uh, I need to give the Supreme Justicar a reason to go after uh, Xander Um. um. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that the Supreme Justicar has yeah. a really good oath regarding both of my characters. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Oh, that, that, that too. That too. Hmm. Yeah. Um... So yeah, yeah. I think I think this will this could be good. Um, what does remind me? What does uh, what does uh, what does Xander do or try to do? Uh, uh he tried to he tried to recruit an army that would um, that would challenge the church. Ah, okay. Um. I, I don't really quite know how. I don't think that he was trying to get enough uh, power to control, um, to mind control enough people mm. so that he could make some sort of uh, revolution against the church. <laughs> Tried to start a revolution, didn't pass up enough flyers. Yep. <laughs> didn't quite work out, sadly. <laughs> Excellent. And... Uh... Can you remind us again why uh, why uh, Xander is a crawler? Uh, he exchanged a lot of his soul for power. Mm. The only way that he could control that uh, amount of people, the masses, is uh, uh, um, by demanding a lot from uh, uh, demons. And when they came back to charge the bill, he was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, I think <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> yeah, pay up. I've got a question. Yeah. It is a vague question. Um, but I'm going to let you fill in the details. Um, as to exactly what it is I am asking about. Because I don't know yet. <laughs> but the question is... How far... Will Supreme uh, Just Justicar or Justiciar Dust go to find out what Xander Um knows? So apparently there is, uh, I'm guessing, a piece of information that uh, Xander has, or that the Just uh, or that uh, Dorvim thinks Xander has, and uh, wants to try to get it out of him. Are, are, you're asking me? You're asking the whole... So the scene is going to be an answer to that question. Okay. Um, and now it's up to you you folks to set the scene. Um, so what's mo most likely going to happen is that... Uh, um, John, you, uh, you've got the... Uh, yeah, you've got Dorvim, right? Right. Um, and, uh, and Dragon is Xander, so you'll be probably playing those characters in this scene. Uh, right. You have to sort of figure out where to set the scene. Uh, you could, uh, we could have, if you need other NPCs, you could uh, get Andante to play some other NPCs if you need them um, for this. And you folks sort of, uh, sort of look and figure out kind of uh, just sort of how you set up the scene, and then you start playing through the scene. And if at any point we have any uncertainty, we'll go to the dice, and I'll, I'll try to monitor for that, and I'll, uh, you know. Uh, figure that out, and then the scene goes until we answer the question. Uh, so, yeah. to put some, we, so we've got to put some parameters around. Uh, you're, you're, the question is vague. It is. So yeah, you, we need to. We do. Yeah, definitely. I, I recommend putting parameters. Yes. So, uh, does I guess the question comes down: Does he believe that that? He knows that Xander knows something 
something big, something that that's threatening the lives of a lot of people, or is it that he that, or it's or is it something that's important but not life threatening? Oh, that sounds like something that's up to you, though. Is I mean, it? Uh, okay, okay, I don't know. The, I don't know the. Yeah, yeah. This it's is this is up to this is up to the the three of you. I just ask the question. <laughs> Thoughts. Mm -hmm. The the question. Think of the question as like a writing prompt, basically. Right. Right. Yeah. So you're sort of coming up with uh, what you think it is, and then playing that scene. So is it uh, okay? So. Let's say it is something very important that may, you know, he might cross a line over into into those into the dark places, into the torture, into the into that kind of thing. Or is it you guys are hiding something? Um, you know, that that's the question, I guess, to to um, to Dragon and 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 Dante and Dante. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Yes, it's quite so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that um, the knowledge that Sander has that uh, uh, Dust wants to get out of him is he found a way to hide his magic in the way that no one else quite was able to. Okay. And okay. that is the way that he got to the degree that he got to with his plans. Right. Okay. So that's a big deal. That's a big challenge to the authority. Um, so how do we pull Andante in here? Do we pull one of his other characters? Did we create a sub character? You you uh, can if you need if you need another character in the scene. That's up to you guys to decide how you want the scene to be set up. Uh, you don't have to pull him in if you don't. Uh, uh, if, if you don't need another character in the scene. If it's just the two of them, it's just the two of them. Hmm. Um, sometimes the scene can even just be one character, and it can be just an, uh, a reflective thing, or it can be something right. that's like, you know, a okay. really short, you see me carrying uh, you, you, you see me carrying a bloody axe into the hut, or, you know, that kind of thing. It, hmm. it calls for it. I don't think that's going to be this. I think it'll be the two of you, yeah. at least. Yeah. But it's... Uh, just however you want to set it up. I, I, I mean, you know, I can guess, I, I can speculate that if uh, Dorvin wants to bring uh, people with them to, uh, to to help the interrogation, you could have uh, have Andante play those. Uh, but it's however you want to set this up. It's a, uh, okay, so uh, I guess Andante, do you want to do a good bad, a good cop bad cop kind of thing here? Um, if that's if you're interested, I'll see what I can do. Um, or or the like. Um, you want to be good cop, good cop, or bad cop, or worse cop? So this is involving um, your Justicar, isn't it? Right. Um, okay. Well, that definitely rules Lucky out. He wouldn't have either the power, nor would he be oh, no. high enough on the radar. So I, uh, I guess yeah. Um, without bringing either of my characters, uh, yeah, I'll I'll try to play good cop on this. Uh, a particular situation. Yeah. Um, I think that an important question to ask is would the uh, Justicar go to Sanders' cell or would he have him taken out and then to a second location and then they would talk? Because if, if, if he's going to be taken out of a cell then uh, uh, um, there's room for guards and whatnot. Right. Or is the... Or, or are we interrogating you out in the city somewhere? You're not actually under arrest, but you might have. But, but that's the question. You know, that may add a little bit to this. That, that, uh, you know, do you go in, you know, and we put you in the in the in the in the dark cells, and you're never coming out. Um, or do you, you know, do you tell us what you're doing before we take you in kind of situation? I don't know. Um, thoughts? Um, 
Well, I didn't really even consider that he was outside of the of the prison, but that sounds like uh, well, a good uh, idea. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a prison well, colony, so most of the prisoners right. work in some way. Right. It, right. There's a. It's a whole city. You might have a a real job. You, I would assume, you do have a real job of some sort. Um. Well, I mean, and if he's a crawler, maybe, he might just be abandoned somewhere. He might, he yeah. might not, not actually do anything. Oh, okay. I didn't. I, okay, I didn't get that piece of that. So. Right. He's a, a nearly good. catatonic wreck, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He oh. might be in a prison, but I guess they might also be keeping him at. Do they have a? Uh, An infirmary or. Or, or more likely, a uh, uh, a ward of magical studies, uh, some place within the the uh, the magical hold where uh, they keep people like him who are particular specimens. Mm, yeah, uh, they totally could. They totally can have that. Like, uh, so a, a magical sanitarium is that what we're right? That's sort of what we're aiming mm, at. I right love now. that idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, are these the people that? have seen too much or have done too much and yeah absolutely well they ain't okay. right <laughs> yeah okay no, 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 the... here. people suffering from magical ailments that have destroyed their minds the uh, people that have uh, entire entire body parts missing and are completely incapacitated no good to anybody uh, just right okay, okay things that that spend all their time in beds or wheelchairs Okay, so we're confronting you in in some sort of not not necessarily a cell, but it's pretty dang close to a cell. Yeah. Okay. Um, Somewhere just fantasy side of a padded cell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just a regular cell with you know a little extra hay on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. Um, I guess, do we have enough to go for the scene? Yes? Yeah. Sounds like it to me. Okay. So, how do we start this then? No? Uh, uh, just set the scene. Say it's... where you are and what's happening. Um, yeah, we can have like a slow close up onto a uh, uh, Sanders body kind of uh, uh, curled up in the corner of a cell uh, and the feigned. Uh, um, drips the the faint sound of water dripping down to the floor, and um, I don't know. Uh, 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 the door forces open, and we see right. someone. Right, and uh, yeah. So Dorvam Dust is in his. He's immaculately dressed. He's in his full, his full, you know, dress uniform. Um. And he's got a pitcher of water in in one hand, and he just splashes it, you know, in in the face of of Xander. Uh, yeah, Xander kind of uh, springs up and looks at him in the uh, in the face, and he says, "The eyes, you've got the eyes, flying like stars, thousands of little eyes of all colors." Red, yellow, blue, and he starts coming closer and closer to you, um, mumbling things about planets and stars, all looking at him. Uh, so it go immediately ahead. weirded out, but having to maintain the the peace in this situation, my character is going to uh, just sort of slip in between. Uh, my uh, Supreme Jessicar, who I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be lower on the ranks then, and uh, and Xander. I'm going to hold my hands out and say, all right, easy there. Easy. We just want to ask you some questions. Yeah, you see, you see, um, uh, Dorvim, his, his hands are, he's clutching his hands, sort of, sort of grinding a little bit. How, uh, how does he feel about Xander? Is he, does he respect him or fear him or pity him? It's more fear for what he's told that he can do. 
Mm. The, the, the challenge that being able to, you know, absolutely hide, hide magic, um, which is something that, that people can't do, you know, the, that we've been told, you know, there's a way to test for this and suddenly something's gone, you know, gone stealthy. Um, right. So there's, there, there's, there's, it, it it's fear. And so he's, uh, he's having to overreact because he's, he's afraid of what that represents, the change hmm. that that represents. Um, to add a little flavor to that, uh, having a, a little understanding of uh, dealing with the unknown. Uh, there's uh, there's been a, a couple of recent nights that have gone sleepless just from the just from the uh, the, the uncertainty and the paranoia that comes with that. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, he says, "Why questions? Yes, all eyes have questions wherever they look." They want to know what's there. How did you do it? Is it um? Yeah. Um, is his last name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you do it? Um. I looked. How did I looked you at the stars. Oh, sorry, I interrupted. No, 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 no go ahead. No, no, you. Well, that would happen. So. Yeah. But yeah, he says he looked at the stars. I'm going to uh, glance back at uh, Supreme Justice Car uh, Dust, and I'm going to say well, the stars do have a, a significant meaning. Perhaps this man's onto something. You're not the uh, complete waste of life we thought you were. I'm going to look back to Xander. <laughs> Really, Why, nothing is. Here. You're going to walk us through how you did it, how you hid the magics. If you don't, it's the black cells. Yeah, I'm going to put on this big smile and say, on the bright side, if you do help us, we'll see that you're treated much better than uh, you currently are. Um. He he kind of he kind of. Um, it takes a little while for for Sander to kind of walk through the the deal that there's a deal going on, um, <laughs> and um, he starts to walk in the cell in circles, and he's mumbling to himself, and um, and uh, he says, "Well, in the dark room, nobody can see. In the dark room." There are no stars in the dark room. You cannot talk. And he springs his his um, his eyes back to you, uh, uh, to the guard. And uh, he points his finger at him, and he says, "You, you called me waste. There is no waste. To those that can see." To those that know where to look, there is no waste. Why would you say such things? Um, I'm going to sort of stammer a little bit and sweat a little. And, uh, maybe lower my hands. Uh, not really sure how to handle this particular situation. He's entirely more cognizant than I thought he was and... You know, talking nice to him isn't exactly working the way I thought it would. I feel like uh, we might have a little uncertainty here. Um, so, uh, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to go to the dice uh, real quick. I am actually going to... Uh, I just realized we've, I, I've got them in the, the sort of the uh, set position, so I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh roll on each one, and then I'm going to actually roll. Um, so let me do that real quick. Um, to put them at a, at a random side first before I, uh, I, I do the roll I'm, I'm thinking of doing here. Um, see kind of which way this goes. Uh, and I think... Let's see... I think I want to roll... I want to roll Savagery and Servility for this. And so we can kind of see what's going to dominate here in this situation. So 
So how do you handle ties? Oh, oh I thought it tied. Okay. So we've got, uh, let's see, savagery over freedom or freedom over servility. So it's either going to be savagery or freedom. So I think, hmm, I uh, feel like I, I want savagery to dominate here um, for, for this one. I feel like something should go terribly wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and cause some issues. Yeah, if, if there is a tie, an interesting thing happens and we go to a table. But uh, we haven't hit that yet. Okay. Um, oh. But, uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, so. savagery is, about, is going to come into play here. And that will ultimately answer this question of how far uh, Justicar Dust is going to go. So, uh, if, if that's the way we're going to go, do I start beating him up? Is that, or should we talk this through before? I guess that's the question here. Is this something we talk through? Like, or uh, well, this, you, you, you this, say you're, well, you, you can just say that you start doing a thing if you think that that's what you would do. Um, um, yeah, okay. And, and, and then, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. Oh, no, that's it. Okay, so yeah, uh, you, as soon as you start, as soon as as Xander talks, starts to talk down to um, the the other guard, um, he would grab him and slam him up against the wall, and and, and you know do the do the brandishing the fist thing, um, you know, right now. Tell us how you did it. Um. Yeah, that kind of catches him by surprise. He widens his eyes when when he uh, 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 sees the Jessica right in front of him. Um, and um, he says, "You have to know where to look. You're all looking below, but you have to look upwards." So many eyes. He would he would look up at the top of the cell, <laughs> and uh, probably punch him in the stomach at that point. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh Sander just oh, and he falls into the ground and kind of just uh, shuffles a little. He would look at the other at the at the guard, get him up. All right, I'm going to uh, grab him by the shoulders, uh, Xander that is, and I'm going to uh, heft him up to his feet and uh, press him against the wall and keep him from uh, slumping over. Yeah, he's very light. <laughs> lifting him is kind of like lifting uh, a, a very empty sack of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um. Now, if you think that we're about to get into uh, you know a, a sort of torment that's going to go to a dark place, we can kind of fade to black on it if you if you want. Um, yeah, just have the dolly out in the in the hallway while he's screaming. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's that that's the way it would go because this guy. I mean, at least dust is is is. Is scared of what he knows, yeah. and, at and this he's point, not giving anything. <laughs> okay. Right. So, uh, unless uh, uh, Dante, you have some 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 secret way of, of convincing him. Although we have a savage outcome, so right? Is that yeah. what the? Yes. Yeah. So oh. we're we're having. So yeah, I guess fade to black and yeah. him on a stretcher going. Is he dead? Is he going to the infirmary? <laughs> I mean, I think we can pretty much end the scene there because we've answered the question. Okay. Um, the uh, the thing being so, uh, I'm assuming Xander at no point begs for mercy during this. Is that correct? Or, or does he? Yeah, uh, No, he doesn't. He doesn't beg for mercy. Okay. And we know that uh, Justicar Dust did not moderate his power, so no oaths are broken there. Um, mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we then would move on to the next scene. Um... One thing I will uh, just question here is now we're actually uh, is uh, in the timing we're a bit later. I am uh, thinking perhaps 
of uh, of going to break, if that's all right with with you fellas. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a quick like five ten minute break, and uh, then we shall right. return. Okay. All right. Shortly. Okay.
We have returned. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we are ready to uh, uh, kick off the rest of these scenes here. Um, it is Dragon's turn now. It is your turn to act as guide, so you get to ask a question and uh, sort of figure out kind of how we're going here and what's going on. Uh, I wonder... Um, what happens when Montano gets in a power competition with, uh, Jessun? J Jessun? Jessuine? Yeah, Jessun. Jessun. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's see. What kind of power competition are we doing here, do we think? Uh, just authority in general. <coughs> Okay, it says, yeah, so, tre yeah, it's like, uh, so we need to get into a situation where I might possibly, uh, I might possibly try to kill Jesse. Well, yeah, actually, they're a bolter, so we're probably trying to hunt them, uh, hunt them down, um, in some way. Uh, I think that could be it. And, uh, so we're now, essentially, yeah, this, I have a feeling this scene might be really fast. Uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, so, uh, what do you think, uh, um, uh, Andante, where do you think we should, uh, we should set this? Um, uh, Jesse does, uh, fancy the black market from time to time. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't have a permanent residence, or at least not a, a single one. Uh, he might end up owning several, but uh, it's very likely that um, he'd be found with relative ease if he just did a little sweep of the city. Mm, excellent, okay. Um, so I think maybe this can be as simple as um, you see, uh, basically um, I've, got, I've got my uh, uh, my brute squad with me. Um, <laughs> and we come up in our uh, in our in our black cloaks, um, <laughs> and uh, I've I've got mine come uh, over my head because so you can't see my horns terribly well right now. Um, but it's kind of obvious who I am, probably, um, as we're coming with our big uh, big sort of billy club like things. Um, and uh, I, I imagine that uh, Montano is really, really big guy, and uh, he's, he's actually has he has a cloak but bare arms, which I realize is a fashion faux pas, but it's a it's a penal colony. Uh, yeah. Tattoos on the arms, and he has a slightly cla slightly clawed hand, uh, ha hands in which you know he's got his uh, thing here in sort of uh, black sort of jerkin and, uh, and and trousers as he's coming up, and. Uh, we're gonna probably as as you're uh, sort of let's see. So this is the black market. So that means that it is uh, somewhere secret. It doesn't really look like a uh, yeah. It, we probably wait for you to come out of like a uh, of a building wherever you've been making a deal. Um, that so that could be uh, just so, somewhere somewhere innocuous looking. It's in the uh, let, let me see here. The black market is in. The uh, the Eastern District, the District of Knowledge. Um, so it could be, uh, yeah, it could be. The deals could be just being made in the prison library, uh, possibly. Um, and so, um, actually, uh, I'd like to, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to volunteer that it be uh, taking place uh, within a little bit shadier. Patch. Maybe uh, some of the buildings were built exceptionally close together. There's very narrow alleyways that are maybe three feet wide, and mm -hmm. some of the some of the shops and buildings are stacked on top of each other two and three times over. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And I'll be uh, be uh, just within a uh, a shop that is uh, um, being watched over by several kind of gaunt looking figures uh mm. thralls of mine that are just sort of yeah. pale, pale eyed and they probably have you know fangs or something like that mm. from 
some weird ritual. And, uh, yeah, I'll be, uh, just on the other side of some very large glass window, seemingly in the midst of an argument with, uh, the shopkeeper. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, I think what's going to happen is, uh, we're just sort of going to pro, pro, we're going to come up and since we can see you through the glass window, uh, we're going to start rolling up and try to approach the shop. And I'm guessing uh, your are, are your men intercept us. Or no? They uh, they start closing in on you, but they're more interested in boxing you into the shop than they are in stopping you from entering it. Oh, nice, awesome, and we totally <laughs> fall for it. Uh, so some of us, uh, so like a contingent stays outside, and then um, uh, and then I walk in with a, with a couple of lads. And, uh, As you do, you hear me screaming at the top of my lungs, and I don't think you have a single brain in your fucking head! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the shopkeeper looks at you, looks at me, looks at you, looks at your guards, looks at me, and I'm like, what? And I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and by stark contrast, I'm this rather, rather slight person with these very fine features, and it doesn't look like I've spent a day of my life out in the sun. Awesome. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but my head tilts back and I look up like a full foot and a half at you like, oh. <laughs> you're soon Longwater. I think you figured you'd know better than to be seen in town. You're coming with us. <laughs> I look at your guards. I look at you. I look at your guards. I look outside. I look at you again. <laughs> Crack a smile. Well, I wouldn't want to disappoint you. I hold my wrists out like, here you go. <laughs> and I just sort of, uh, I just sort of gesture to one of my men who's going to come forward with a rope. Because um, we don't, ha we, they don't assign us manacles. Uh, <laughs> and he's going to attempt to tie, uh, to tie you up. <laughs> um, and the question is, do you, do you allow it or is there, or is there conflict? All right, uh, I would, um, I would very likely, um, not allow myself to be captured. Okay. So there's probably going to be, uh, the, the starting of a scuffle right outside the doors. It as sounds uh, like uncertainty. It is. Yeah. It is, sir. So you get to pick two dice, uh, two of those All dice right. that you want to roll, and you do that thing. Uh... I think I'm going to... So I get to roll the two that I choose, right? That is correct. All right. So I'm going to choose uh, Savagery and Freedom. Excellent. Random side. Random side. So then the outcome is going to be Savagery, right? Um, so let's see. Yeah, we've got... Uh, yeah, Savagery is the, uh, the only outcome. <laughs> For this, ooh, okay. So, this is gonna get bloody. Um, the question becomes, uh, I, I think here, then for us to sort of figure out who does this, um, either this is, hmm. I don't know if, uh, yeah. Like, I don't know if we're going to be actually... All of your guards, all of my guards yeah, rush. Like, they, there's a big yeah. dust cloud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think... Am I speaking out from underneath it all? Awesome. <laughs> Just sort of tweaking, running out. Okay, so yeah, I think what happens then <laughs> is I probably, just to get things moving along on this track, um, as, it's, as savagery is dominating here, I think I accidentally kill... Uh, one of your guards, um, that, uh, that trying to trying to trying to get you, <laughs> and uh, and that I have broken my oath. So um, that would be uh, so that'd be the scene, I think. <laughs> if that, 
If, if you're satisfied, <laughs> if you're satisfied, if you're satisfied with that dragon, <laughs> does uh, does uh, Jesse escape or is he yeah. captured yeah, after? He, the well, he he was uh, squeaking out underneath. Um, mm. Savagery okay, okay. predominates here, so um, I don't know if uh, I, I'd, I'd leave that up to Andante to decide how that's expressed. I think I, it sounds to me like he probably escapes, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, and Dante, what do you think? Do you think he escapes? Uh, I'd, I'd say that the odds are more or less in his favor. He probably had a oh, okay. one or two more people on his side, yeah. even if they were you know, not really equipped to handle your uh, your bruisers. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, All right, yeah. that's how it happens. So I am off the ta uh, cat. So Montano is off the table. He has killed someone. And... Thus, things are not the same. Things are shifting. And, of course, that changes the balance of power under the Marines. Um, so he's out. Now, um, when someone breaks their oath, uh, a thing happens. Uh, the player of the oath-breaking notable must immediately choose one of the following options. A notable, not necessarily the oath-breaker, uh, ch changes position on the ladder. Um, a planetary survey or colonial record assessment changes, for better or worse, or the unique drive for the game changes. I think that we are fine with freedom. I don't want to change that. Um, so either I'm going to change the environment or I'm going to or um, change someone on the ladder. Um, which could be interesting. Um, hmm... And it's and it's on the same side of the ladder, right? Well, actually, I can move anyone anywhere. Uh -huh. um, last time, uh, the we had the Dimber Damber end up becoming the governor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can't be all that good. Effectively. <laughs> so let me see. Um, I feel like I almost want to move, and yeah, and and we can do this even if there's someone else in that space on the ladder. It doesn't displace them necessarily. But it means there's possibly a power struggle going on. In a way, I kind of want to give... Uh, I kind of want to move uh, Jesseun up on the ladder. Uh, because, like, maybe this, uh, since he got away, um, it actually has, has garnered him more uh, more power and ability. I, 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 would you be okay with that, or do you want to keep them, them as just a bolter for right now? I'm fine with that. Okay. So I think I'm gonna elevate um, uh, Jesseun to <laughs> once again to put him in conflict with my other character <laughs> for no apparent reason. <laughs> I'm gonna say that uh, yeah, that uh, Jesseun is gonna become the abbot or Lord of Vice. I think that the uh, I think at that point the uh, the Ungers have seen his potential and recruit him to uh, to to run Vice throughout the colony. <laughs> It's been a good day. It has indeed. <laughs> so, this once again, yeah. Let me. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. And now, we must play a little bit with the fonts. <laughs> yeah, roll twenty is not yeah. too good for that. <laughs> nah. Okay. Um. So. Yeah, we know what my what my, what my is here. So I'm gonna move this unit over there. Move that up there. There we go. And uh, so Jesseun is uh, now the abbot, the the Lord of Vice. And uh, it is John's turn to ask a question. Hmm. I think you're muted, sir. Sorry. Um, so the question needs to be between the two sides. Well, not even that. It can be even on the same side. It just needs to challenge someone's oath. Okay. And um, so, uh, okay, so. Uh, and 
And it needs to be for a character that's not yours. That's basically those are the requirements. Right, right. And so, um, so could it be as simple as? Uh, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like. Um, what would cause Lucky Green? You know, how how would it be? How did Lucky Green? No, you can't do that. I don't, we've, because the the scene has to solve whether he breaks an oath or not, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, now to be fair, this question also does give you a certain degree of narrative power. You could, it, it, um, if you do something that actually affects something basic. I mean, you know, you can kill a character in a question uh, if you if you want. Like, you know, uh, when when my. <laughs> When Montano died, how is it that you know? So, you know, you could do something like that, but you just need uh, you need to, the consent of the player that's <laughs> controlling right. that character is the main thing. You need to be okay with them before you you, you know. Um. Okay. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, it wouldn't be you know how did he rat out his mates necessarily? You kind of need to at- would it need to attach something else to it to. Uh, Put him right. in a situation that would encourage him to rat out his mates, and then we have to see what happens in the situation. Um. So, but it wouldn't be. How did? Um. I, and and I, I keep coming back to Lucky Green because of that's it's such an interesting oath to see if yeah. you could. Get, um. Okay, so would it, would it be? Could it be? I guess. Because uh, again, not sure um, that Lucky has come across um, information that threatens um, threatens the whole colony, threatens yeah. the whole um, easily. Just you know, it, you know, it could be something. Sorry, it could be like something. That basically, one of his one of his mates has uh, uh, one of his pals is doing something that threatens the whole colony. Right. Okay. That's that's where. Um, so, okay. So, Lucky Green's um, mate is is almost certainly involved in a in a in a cult that is going to disrupt the barrier between here and the and the other realm. Mm. Uh, what do they do? What does he do? Um, is that a, is that fair? Is that too broad? You can narrow it down a little bit further if you want to give him more information to work with. Um, um, that there, there's a ritual. He's he's become aware that that what from one of his mates that there's a ritual that is going to take place tonight. Okay. Um. And it's a fairly, it's a, it's a very well-armed group of cultists um, that are, that are, that are doing this. And you don't believe that you could disrupt this directly yourself. So I guess it might be what, sorry, I'm I'm sorry to try to, I'm not trying to speak for you here, but I'm just sort of making a suggestion uh, is, so it would be maybe... Something along the lines of what would happen if uh, he goes to like X per when when Lucky Green goes to X person to try to uh, stop the activity of that cult, which uh, one of his friends happens to be involved in. Oh, I see something what you're like saying. That. So it could be you know, yeah, um, something so like that we, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, and I guess we'll deal with. Um, I don't, uh, okay, so it's it, it's. Uh, can I say that it's a common uh, a common friend between the spouse and Lucky Green, oh, totally. um, Ada, Ada Greenlace and Lucky Green? Um, that is the is the actual is is a common friend that is part of this this cult that is that is going for a you know a. a, a a ritual at a conjunction that could threaten the whole colony, um, and so um, 
I, I can't take it to my own character. So, um, and the, who's the, oh, and he's dead. So, well, <laughs> well, so I, I was going to go to the Dark Levy side. Uh, well, Montano's not dead. I mean, we can still have him as an NPC. Um, but, uh, but he doesn't have quite the weight that he used to, yeah. right? Yeah, he's an NPC now, so um, there, it's it's really uh, so so there wouldn't be any. Um, he wouldn't. He wouldn't have that. Uh, so, so I mean, yeah, I we I I, I will totally uh, attempt to challenge him if you want to do that, but that's uh, up to you. Well, um, I don't want to use my own character, so that yeah. he was the only he's the obvious one that. Uh, yeah. So I was I, I was going. I mean, uh, he could also be going straight to the warden mayor, maybe, but that again, that's those, those are other things too. Um, it, it, again, also an NPC, not a notable, but um, who, who do you think that uh, if well, uh, maybe he would go to? That's that's what I. I so maybe he's not. He he. If, well, I, I, maybe that's who would. Maybe that's the question. But who, who would did, who would Lucky go to? Oh, I know. I think that it's um, it would be a better question to have someone come to him rather than mm -hmm. like it's a thing that, that he knows, work. but but yeah, like yeah. A, an agent of the law or someone on on uh, someone in power it. comes to this knowledge of hey someone is uh, you know trying to destroy this whole thing and it goes to too lucky for that. Uh, okay, actually, I have, I think I have, uh, if we combine a couple of things, I have another suggestion. Sure, um, sure. Um, that uh, uh, if we combine what you were talking about earlier about the possibility that Ada and Lucky have a mutual friend who's involved in it, right. maybe Ada doesn't know exactly what's happening with them, Right. but she knows that Lucky might. Ah. And then is coming to Lucky to try to find out. Okay, yeah, that works. That works. And that, that, that accomplishes that. So, so yeah, Ada. Yeah. So yeah, Ada has come to Lucky, trying to head this off. Oh, also, and, quick question: Who is uh, who is uh, Ada the spouse of again? That's what I was about to ask. Yeah. Uh, she is the spouse of a. Oh, I think I said it was a merchant. Um, we could make that the person that's yeah, involved in the cult. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'm saying that you know what? He's a he's a harbor master. That's how she is able to mm. get this smuggling operation going on. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no. So yeah, that uh, that tracks for me. What do you think, uh, yeah. John? Will that, yeah, yeah. that work for you? Is the basically? Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the question would be something along the lines of how much information does uh, does 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 Ada get from uh, from like what really what happens when you know she goes to confront him and find out what's happening with their uh, with their friend with their mutual well, with with her husband. As I say, it's with her husband. Yeah. So yeah, who is a who is a mate of yeah. of Lucky? Yeah. So Lucky is a is an old drinking buddy of of her husband. Yeah. So. Um, so yes, what happens when when those two? Um, ooh, and she's not going to place her own sa safety above the other people's freedom. Yeah. So interesting. Which so, okay. there's a possibility of challenging that as well in this scene because it depends right. on yeah. you know how she's going to react to everything that's happening. Uh, so yeah, where where would um, Ada find Lucky? Oh, everyone knows where Lucky is. Uh, he he lives down by the uh, by the docks uh, in this uh, two story shack. So, um, uh, people are people are always hanging out there. Uh, young folks who still think they have a chance in the uh, the outside world, and older folk who are you know just just at the point where they they can't you know spend their sentence in here uh, and they're not going to survive it. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, we get like <clears throat> a shot from across the street. Uh, there's people like walking by 
and we see Ada with relatively fancy-ish clothes. It's not the most showy, but not uh, um, not plain. And uh, she walks into the shack and knocks on on Lucky's door. Oh, the door is open. Uh, on the inside, you can see uh, a table uh, with a, a stool. Uh, there's a an empty fire pit, uh, and then up against the far wall, there's a uh, there's a, a warped desk, which looks like it got pulled from the ocean at some point in time. And uh, behind it is Lucky, and he's got on probably his only actual set of clothes. Uh, they're uh, kind of dirty, and they look like maybe they belong to at one point in time a uh, a, a carnival head, but they're his business clothes. <laughs> he's uh, he's currently uh, dismissing somebody who has offered up all of you know three gold coins uh, in exchange for their freedom, and uh, he tells them to come back when he can, and then looks to you and waves you in, or uh, Ada and. Well, Lucky, uh, I'm glad to find you in good health. How have you been? I've been as well as... as well as the gulls fly. And yourself? I'm doing quite well myself, except for a, a, a small little startling rumor. I heard there are some... there is a group of people that is working. Um to make sure that everyone on the colony is freed not quite in the same freedom that we deal but permanently <laughs> do you happen to know anything about that? Well, that's very worrisome um, as a matter of fact I haven't heard anything I lie right to her face about <laughs> um well lucky and uh, she she um gets a little bit closer to the desk and uh, says we both know you're a man of many years. You've got informants, you've got friends, you've got contacts. To claim ignorance over a matter on this colony is something quite unlike you. I'm doing this for everyone's sake. I'm going to, uh, uh, I mean, Lucky's going to sort of glance out the window towards the door, make sure there's a uh, Nobody uh, uh, truly unwanted listening in. And then he's going to lean in close. He's going to cup his hand and say, come here. And we're going to just sort of fade to black on that one. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, what do we think? Did, uh, do we, did, did Lucky actually... Uh, did Lucky actually just rat uh, rat his friend out, or oh? <laughs> yeah, he did. I just see lines are just being drawn. Awesome. Okay, cool. So <laughs> now you have a decision to make to make, sir. Uh, once again, you can, if you wish, you can move someone on the ladder, or you can change one of the elements of the colony, um, or you can change the drive. Can you only change the drive to one of the other ones? Or do you pick... We crossed off uh, things. So, so, yeah, since it's uh, since uh, Lucky has just broken his oath, um, uh, Andante gets to decide um, if... Uh, yeah, it would be like if he changed, changed the drive, then it would be one of the ones that's been crossed out. It would change over to, to one of those. Gotcha. Okay. Um, like that. Uh, okay, uh, I will not be making any changes. Okay. Well, 
you do need to uh, yeah the you do need to choose uh, one of the options um, so um, you, we can so, someone's gonna so we do need to move somebody or we need to um, or we need to change one of the uh, one of the uh, survey or record assessment bits um, and we can I mean we can help with that but uh, all right um, let's uh change one of the uh, the survey uh, bits. One of the survey bits. Okay, cool. So, um, looking back down at it again, um, yeah, and the only reason I insisted in this case is just because I just re I'm, I'm looking down at it and said the player must immediately choose. So, um, <laughs> so uh, things must change. So something's happening to the environment or, or, or to the prison itself. So this will be interesting. So right now we have atmosphere is excellent, <coughs> hydrology is favorable, biology is benign, we have planning is meticulous, workforce is motivated, and justice is universal. Uh, you could change one of those if you want to make things worse, or you could change one of the other things to make things better in the colony. Uh, I would like to uh, change the uh, environment to worse. Excellent. So um, we've got atmosphere, hydrology, or biology. Which one do you want to take out? Biology. Okay. So, biology is benign was the uh, was the way we had this here. So, what that now means is uh, native life here is toxic, where, is, where it isn't outright lethal. It might be acidic, explosive, infectious, infectious, aggressive, or deadly in countless other ways. So, what do you think? Do you think then that something has gone wrong with the magic that they're using to make crops, it sounds like to me? <laughs> <laughs> or is it a plague of some sort? It could be a plague. I, you know what? I think that uh, I think that something has happened, and uh, if we want to make it as a result of that scene, um, I think that the cult succeeded. Uh, yeah, like she knows who did it, but didn't really do anything about it. Ah. Um. Wait, wait a minute. Or, or does that undermine the, the the giving up of the belief? No, no, um, I don't think so. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it didn't happen during the scene necessarily, but it's a it's a question of uh, yeah, if she didn't do it for reasons of safety, if like if she tried to uh, to find him but didn't, then we could say that. Um, or if you want to break the oath, we can. Uh, but uh, uh, at the very uh, at the very minimum, what we can say is that maybe yeah, maybe the cult succeeded okay. and. Uh, then the, the, the biology of is now blighted, so it's now, mm. yeah, no longer, I, I think it's probably no longer possible to grow stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we're facing food riots and... Yeah. 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 So things are heating up. And the crops just turn into these long skeletal arms or something like that. Yes! Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's, we, we've, uh, we now have much more. Our crops are now seventy-five percent more metal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Okay. Um, so that's so that just happened. Uh, Andante, it is your turn to ask a question. Okay. Um, with the sudden, uh, with the sudden blight upon the crops. Um. Would Hector Voss let me make sure I've got this guy right? Uh, yeah. Um, feel the need to um, sort of uh, maneuver himself out of this nasty situation, oh. and, and, and for that matter, uh, the same would go for um, Captain Sharp. And uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. So let's see. Uh, this could, a really challenge there. I think this could be a situation where maybe uh, Captain Sharp is coming to Hector to uh, because it's like we got to get out of here. You know a way out. Um, it's a last resort, but the riots are happening, and we're backed into a corner. I can't control all these people, um, and. Uh, I, I'm not staying here uh, to do the honorable thing. So, um, 
Let's, uh, I'd rather deal with, you know, I got connections, so, yeah, okay, yeah, do, uh, sh shall we, shall we do that? Shall we play the scene? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, John, where is, yeah. uh, let's see, Hector is, uh, I, over on the, uh, the prison aisle, right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's locked up. Okay, so, I think what happens, if I may, uh, sure. initially, is that, uh, so, what is, what is Hector's, uh, is, is Hector in a cell? Is he uh, is he like in a cell and bound up like type? <laughs> I could see that. I yeah. could see that. Um, especially if if in riot in times of riot, that's one of those things that that happens to him. Is you know that you know they, they lock him up in the jacket. Yeah. Right. Right. It's like okay. Normally, you know, we're on we're on double red alert. So yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to get chained up. But. Okay, so so I think here's what happens. So he's there. Usually he's got a couple of guards standing watch uh, outside right. the cell. You've got the cell, and inside the cell he's there just sort of uh, uh, wearing the uh, wearing the straight jacket. Um, possibly, uh, I don't know if they'd also chain him to the wall or not, but they are kind of afraid of him. Um but they, they're probably, and they'd probably keep it to, they, maybe they just have a ball and chain around his ankle so he can't go too far. Um, so right. they let him walk around the cell. And so the two guards immediately just sort of like turn. Uh, Captain Sharp comes in. And we know how things really work here. And so when they see Evan come in, uh, Evan is, is wearing a doublet um, and uh, has, a, has a pointy little beard. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, just comes in, and he's like, you know, he gestures to the guards, and they immediately, they'll, they'll look, and uh, he shakes a bag of coins, and they turn, and he, he gives them coins, and they turn, and they leave. And he picks up, uh, you know, he, he, gra he ta and the second one, he takes, he actually hands him a set of keys. He comes up, unlocks your cell. Uh, what do we see, uh, what, what do we see when we see Hector? Um, a gaunt tall man with with long kind of kind of long hair I mean shoulder length um, an unkempt beard um, hollow hollow eyes I mean mm. it, it, it disturbs you to look at his in his eyes uh, and that's probably the only power he really has left at this point is that when he looks at you you get shivery despite that uh, Evan comes forward with another key and he unlocks the manacle across your face. Uh, across your mouth. He, he removes the, uh, the thing keeping you from speaking. Uh, sort of the mask. Says, All right. More importantly, biting. We have... All right, we must, we must now make an arrangement, you and I. As we are now beyond repair in this place, we must abandon it. There is a fast way out, and I know that you can get us there. I am prepared, and he says, holding up a dagger, to break the wards, the line of the circle of wards around your cell, so that you may, so you may perform the ritual. Let, let us be clear. You wish to leave this island and go there. I have had it assured through my contacts. I know many a demon on the other side. I don't know quite what uh, what country uh, it turns out Hector, uh, Evan seems to be from, the way that I'm speaking right now, so I'm going to try to normalize <laughs> here. I have I have uh, I have people in the I have people in the cult of Alfero. We have made arrangements. We can make this work. He raises the dagger. I will let you out, but you, mu we, you must take us there. You would be foolish to go there. They will devour your mind. Better than to slowly have my body devoured by lack of food in here. It is not worth the price. What, what do you hope to gain there? C 
can you not quell these this rabble? You have not seen the rabble, have you? <laughs> Everything out there is on fire. It would hardly be much of a change. He <sighs> hey, hey, pauses for a long time. My welcome is not guaranteed there. Ah. Uh, I can uh, I can offer you protection on that side. That is not going to be a problem. Hmm. Mm. Better to go than to be taken. Hmm. You will last longer there than here, I can guarantee you that. Hmm. <laughs> that, that's part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. So fear of bodily death versus fear of of uh, of being tortured for the rest of eternity um, <laughs> so uh, uh, that sounds like uncertainty to me yeah, yeah that's uncertainty at this point yep absolutely all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll drive which I would assume would I mean physical death is probably a freedom in comparison to whatever the there has to offer right I'm going to uh, ability of course oh well there we go then oh okay yep. so you get to choose between. Uh, oh, oh wait we have a tie we have a tie <laughs> we have a tie between savagery and freedom let me look up the table real quick yes okay tied fives all right um, and the third die is a two. Um, oh, you didn't roll the third die. Well, no, no, that's what I'm saying. It's, we take oh. the value of the third. That's how we look. That's how I use this table, basically. Oh. What's okay. the value of the third die? Um, if it had been a five, we would have gotten Planet of Doom. But uh, <laughs> yes, it's uh, so uh, th this uh, this is tell the truth long enough, and it becomes a lie. Is, Interesting. Is the prompt here for that? So, let's see. Uh, that sounds like something you would have to do to him. Okay. Um, right. But it also sounds well, like um, you still uh, H Hector's there. fears might be unfounded at this point. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it could be that it's just that. Uh, yeah. I can see it going that way. So then I guess he goes, right? It sounds like it. Uh, it sounds like we go. Um, so okay. so that actually takes both of us out. Uh, <laughs> because um, Captain Sharp is leaving and I don't get to, because I didn't break my oath um, as I see it, um, I don't get to move anything, but uh, uh, Hector uh, does, did break his oath, so Hector gets to move something. Hmm. Uh, either you can move a, someone on the ladder, or you can change an environmental thing, or you can change the drive. Um. I like the idea of of the the spouse moving up either to head in in the chaos mm -hmm. stepping into into one of the top top roles one one of the the governor or the Ooh, the, the, the Amber Amber Cool where do you want uh, where do you want to put her I like to think that the I like to think the mayor if she steps in on a power vacuum after the mayor's killed in the riots. Okay. Or... Right. You got it. Oh, and it was, it was gruesome too. They, 
tore him apart. Yeah. Prob- yeah. <laughs> and drank his blood, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, th- that's what they do. As demons do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, damn. We are at, uh, so, we're just just let me ask quickly. We're at about, uh, we're, we're getting close to the end here. So, my question to you folks is, uh, do we want to do one more scene, or do we want to just uh, sw- go directly to narrating the, the end game? Let's uh, narrate the end, in my opinion. All right, yeah, let's go to the ending. That works. Okay. So, um, this is actually, uh, so, this is not so much a, uh, a, a mechanic, per se. Ending the game, it's about to end when, uh, when combined number of broken oaths and dead, insane, or missing notables... Uh, exceeds the number of players, or in this case, matches the number of players, which are about there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think what yeah, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around, and we're just going to say what we think happens to the, our remaining characters, as uh, things we already know things are going to going to hell at this point. Uh, yep. There there are riots all over the place. Food is the the food magic is no longer working. Uh, we have uh, just sort of now competing demon interests happening uh, here because of uh, the, the shift in what's going on. We've had uh, the Warden Mayor's been killed and a- Ada Greenlace is now trying to govern. Um, so let's do that. Um, I think, so we'll go around. I think what I'll do uh, is, since we've been going clockwise this whole time, I will go counterclockwise. Yeah. And we will start with Andante. Um so, let me see. Uh, so, so do we stick to uh, the characters that we were playing specifically, or is it just uh, anybody? Um, I think... Well, oh. <laughs> it's an interesting thought. Um, you can include others, I think, in it, but it's mostly going to be the ones that you're playing, I think, probably. Um, for okay. This With this uh, power vacuum uh, now filled by someone as humble as Ada Greenlands, I think that uh, in the... Uh, in the ensuing chaos or the aftermath uh, therein, uh, just when Long Waters is going to uh, approach her as part of a uh, a power play, he's going to try to keep these demons pitted against each other, and he wants her support in that matter, and anybody that does support her to kind of fall in line behind him. Mm, awesome. Very cool. And... Uh... Uh, around to John. Um, you have uh, your Supreme Justicar remaining. Yeah, okay, Devin probably he probably was was behind behind Ada's rise to, to the mayorship. Um, it was probably one of those situations and probably died in the died in the sort of the uh, died, you know, quelling the worst of it, you know, um, or or basically stanching the the maybe stopping the actual breach, but by then you know everything has everything's on fire and and um, he you know he probably he. He probably, in the end, did, you know, he did uh, moderate, uh, he, uh, realizing that um, being inflexible about, about you know, about justice probably was one of the reasons that, um, that, you know, there were so many people for the riot to, to sweep up, that if, uh, if justice had been a little, little more um, flexible, um, you know, things were things might have 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 come around, and that was basically his dying, um, his dying uh, statements to to Ada is to uh, <laughs> to to rule, uh, you know, justly but fairly, I guess. Excellent. And uh, Dragon, uh, what happens to uh, to to uh, Ada and Xander? Um, I think that. After being interrogated by the Jessicar, uh, Sander probably Sander probably just dies. Um, 
Uh, he was weak enough, and uh, the ruthlessness of his questioning methods don't really leave a lot of life in him. Um, the secret of how he got to hide magic is gone with him. Perhaps it could have saved the, the colony, but too late. <laughs> it is too late. Um, and when it comes to Ada... Um, oh god i think that i think that she's gonna she's gonna um she's gonna die in a coup um she's gonna try to get a hold of this of this colony and she's gonna try to to keep on her her ideal of like trying to get innocent people out of there but less so in cover um and once people realize that she's just shipping people off they go like hey how come i'm not off of here mm -hmm. and um yeah they 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 become an, an angry mob excellent and uh, both of my characters are gone, so I don't have anything to worry about there. But <laughs> <laughs> as we uh, just uh, Evan, Evan Unger just sort of uh, sits sits back, smoking his uh, watching from the void, smoking his demonic cigar, uh, his, uh, his his arm around Hector's shoulder, and uh, just looking at the chaos down to the chaos. And the, see, I told you it would be all right. No. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> awesome. Well, folks, uh, that is that. Uh, we have, uh, and thus the story of Perdition's Hold comes to an end. Uh, finally, finally, after, uh, after, uh, the new, the years since we built this thing, we have, uh, we have, we have told a story with it, and it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for playing, everyone. Uh, I'm excited we got to do this. Uh, this time I'm, I'm, I am gonna go around the opposite way from where I started. And ask folks to say what you thought of the game and where, um, if you want, where uh, where folks can find you or um, anything else you may want to plug or just uh, anything you just want to say in concluding thoughts. Uh, basically, <laughs> anything you might you might have for us. And we will start once uh, going counterclockwise with Andante. Well, I had a great time. I'm uh, I'm glad I was able to be a part of this. Uh, thank you for letting me in on the game. Um, it's a very interesting system. Uh, I'd like to uh, try playing it again sometime. Um, uh, I don't have any plugs or anything, but uh, as a as a final thought, I'd like to say that it's it's very interesting that uh, so many more or less good people died during this situation, and and really all we saw was a shift from things being more or less not ideal to being downright devastating. Yep. Yeah, no, that's 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 how it goes. <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, thank you so much for playing. It was it was awesome getting yeah. to play with you. It was really fun. Um, and uh, John, um, so uh, excellent game. Um, uh, I would like to play it again sometime, just because, um, as with with most things, you know, once you get see the how the wheels work uh, or see the wheels in motion, um, it the next time gets a little easier. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, it, it was fun to see some, some of the stuff come to fruition, um, and see it go in different ways than, than we had the ideas back. Yeah. It's been oh, yeah. five years, a long time ago. <laughs> um, uh, I'm at night flight on, um, Twitter. Um, I, just a plug. I don't have anything else to plug. But there's this, uh, there's a, I, I'm a, a, I'm a cartographer or amateur. Uh, I used to be a professional cartographer and now I'm an amateur car, cartographer. And there's the, a wonderful, um, right now it's in a humble bundle, almost a Kickstarter-ish mode um, called Wonder Draft. Um, and um, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the, uh, yeah. The link to the it, it, they are using Reddit as their page, um, and it's really cheap. And if you are a fantasy uh, player DM kind of thing, and you like to draw maps, 
this is probably the easiest oh, that is maps, so cool. map software that you will you will see. Um, go out there. They they like they have a humble bundle, oh, nice. and I think it's like tw it's less than twenty bucks, uh, as I recall. Um, and this is one hundred percent worth it. it. Is worth the, uh, go get this thing. Support this guy. Um, apparently, he was a uh, he. He was a, a, a software author, and mm -hmm. he could not find the mapping software that he wanted, so he wrote it. Which and, is amazing. yeah. Awesome. And it's an ongoing thing, and so go out there and look at it. Uh, good stuff. So, cool. Awesome. And thank you for having me here. Oh, That's thanks it. for playing again. That's, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I do enjoy getting to play games with you again every now and then. It's been years, yeah. so it's cool we yep. can do this. And the Dragon, finally. I'm just flabbergasted by the software. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> it does look like good. I, 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 I'm trying to learn to make uh, maps, like draw them by myself. Go um, get this right now. <laughs> but this is really cool. Um, but yeah, I am Son of a Dragon. You can find me at uh, twitter.com slash Son of a Dragon, twitch.tv slash Son of a Dragon. Um, this game was really cool. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, I kind of, I am kind of curious now on how it works um, over multiple sessions hmm. when you have like chances to make, the chance to make uh, um, characters interact. Yeah. Um, like bully pulpit games are really good at emulating TV. And uh, like, I, 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 I like TV, so I like this. <laughs> Yeah, it would be interesting to see something like that because in a in a continuing game or at the very least in uh, the standard game, you replace characters as they are uh, as they go as they drop out. Yeah. So um and and you, and you pick up another one. So it's always uh, there's always a rotating cast. And so you can really make yeah, that last yeah. as long as you want if you uh, if you apply it that way. Um so that uh, that that's an interesting thing for folks to explore should they desire to. Um once again as for me, I'm Jim Ryan. Uh, I uh, enjoyed this mightily. I uh, I very much like Durance. I'm very glad I'm finally getting a chance to uh, play multiple sessions of this thing, and uh, it's uh, it it is wonderful. I really enjoyed playing with you all for this. This was great. Um, and we uh, and again, I, I'm just pleased we got to use this world again. I will put the link one more time if anyone wants to. Uh, uh, if anyone's come in late and wants to. Uh, uh, listen to the podcast uh, where we created it uh, with Clint Black. Um, then that's uh, that's there in the chat. Um, you can find me at OtherDoc on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, my website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I've put links down below on my Twitch page to my Twitter, YouTube, and website, along with a link to a very silly short story that I've released on Amazon, if you would like to check that out. Uh, on Twitch, every Tuesday evening, I play Urban Shadows uh, over on Off the Table, where I get to play the increasingly harrowed Dr. Frank, L Dr. Frank Riley, uh, who's having a rough time of it lately as his world is starting to, to collapse around him. Uh, it's crazy fun to play, and I'm looking forward to our next session. Uh, on this channel, on Friday afternoons and Saturday mornings, I play video games. Then this coming Saturday, we're planning to have our next session of The Cold Ruins of Last Life, a setting for Dungeon World where we're all undead looking for answers, or uh, in the case of my spectral paladin, retribution. Uh, <laughs> I'm, ha I'm very glad we're get we've got that game going again. Uh, then one week from today, on Sunday, we'll be playing this month's final session of Durance, and this time... I'll be adapting it for use with a setting that rather a lot of folks in the RPG community are familiar with, the World of Darkness. Ah. We're going to be taking a look to see how the latter works when it's applied to vampire politics. <laughs> so if you're a fan oh. of Vampire the Masquerade, come on back next week and check it out. Cool. Um, and uh, I think that is that. So uh, thank you all so much for watching, folks. Uh, it's been a delight. Take care. And I'll see you all of a sudden. Farewell. Yeah. Cool.